Hello, this is James Taylor and Write Your Own Story. Firstly, welcome to this podcast. I'm a hypnotherapist, a counsellor and a life coach. And the aim of this podcast is to give you some tips, tricks and tools so you can start to evolve and change and become a better version of who you are naturally whilst letting go of some of the things that have been holding you back. So I really do hope you enjoy this podcast. Feel free to like and subscribe and let's get on with it. In this podcast episode, I want to talk about the death of Queen Elizabeth II, possibly being triggered yourself by this, and some remedies or things that might help. So just talking about Queen Elizabeth II, she's the only queen I've ever known. She was born in 1926, and she died on the 8th of September of this year, and she was 96 years of age. She's actually been the longest reigning monarch. 70 years and 214 days on my Google search for this podcast episode. Now, she wasn't actually meant to be queen. What happened was her grandfather died in 1936 and her uncle, Edward, was made king. But he abdicated, which meant her father, George VI, became king. Now, she was actually in Kenya when her father died. And that meant she immediately became queen. She was only 25 years of age. And that was on the 6th of February 1952. So she had to make her way back to the UK where all the ceremonial things took place. Now she was made queen in 1952. But in 1953 she went on a seven month round the world tour. And she's actually been to many countries where she was the first monarch to be visiting those countries. Now, of course, death is guaranteed to all of us. And for some, that may be a bit of a depressing topic. But it's a true one. Now, just thinking about this for a second. We've all got our own families. We've all got our own relatives. And there might be things that have happened in all our families that we wouldn't want to be public knowledge. You know, we keep it in-house. What goes on under this roof stays under this roof, that kind of thing. Well, the Queen didn't have that kind of luxury. She might have had many luxuries in life, but she didn't have that kind of luxury. You know, there was divorces in her own family. There was death. There was scandal. Some quite recent. And that was all played out in the public eye. And when you think about how you might feel if that had happened to you, if every secret of your family was national news and how it might be for the family who remain that every coin in their pocket has the picture of their mum, their grandmother, their auntie. How would that be? Now for some listening to this podcast they may even be getting triggered by the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Perhaps it brings memories up of someone in your family who's died. Maybe there was an old grandmother and it's reminding you of that. Or maybe it's bringing up thoughts of there's a relationship that I've got that I didn't want or there's a relationship I didn't have that I did want. I remember the public grieving when Princess Diana died and all the flowers were outside the palace and then the funeral ceremony took place and even though the streets were lined with public on either side, and some were like hailing flowers at the funeral procession as it went past. Although I'm not a royalist, I think the Queen was an amazing woman. I think she did an incredible job in incredibly difficult circumstances. And to do it right up until the age of 96, I mean, when she became Queen, as I mentioned before, she was 25 years of age. And to work every single day, up until a few days before she died, I think is incredible. And she came from a different kind of generation. She came from a generation where you roll your sleeves up when it's difficult and you get stuck in. You do what needs to be done and you find a way to get past things. And I think that's a fantastic mindset to have. It's difficult now. 
get your head down, get on with it, get past it, and then fix what needs to be fixed. Now, if you've been triggered by the death of Queen Elizabeth II, I want to speak about some things that might help you. Now, there was a lady called Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. She was a Swiss-American psychiatrist, and in fact, I should do a podcast on her alone because she is an incredible, or was an incredible woman. She died in 2004. But she was a psychiatrist and she dedicated her life on the topic of people who were terminally ill. And she came up with a topic that became known as the Kubler-Ross model. And I'm also going to do a book recommendation here as well at the end. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross was working with terminally ill patients. And she discovered that the patients, as they approached the end of their life, there would be different stages that they would go through. She identified five. Later they became more, but I'll keep her for five just for ease. And she also noticed that the people didn't go through all the five, but she hoped that they'd reach the last one. And the stages were denial, anger, bargaining, depression and the last one being acceptance one of the things that she said was anger is known as the pain's bodyguard and i think that's quite deep really now what she noticed was not only the person who was dying was going through these stages so were the surviving members of the family and friends and that could cause conflict So let's say a person is dying and they are in the acceptance stage. And let's say they've got two children, two adult children. Let's say one of them is in the acceptance stage as well. But another one is in the denial stage. Well, that denial may turn into anger at the other sibling. Because sibling one is in the accepting stage and sibling two is. No, they're not going to die. They're going to live. They're going to live for... There's going to be a cure for for this. They're going to get better. The bargaining stage I mentioned, that can either be the person who is dying, wishing for like a bit longer. If I I only had another six months, I could do this. If, If this had happened, if that had happened. And with a friend or family member, it can be, if only I'd have done this, if only I'd have done that. If only I'd have said I love them one more time, would that have made a difference? If only I'd been kinder. And that's the bargaining stage. Now, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross wrote a a really fascinating book. I I would really recommend this one. It's called On Death and Dying. What I'll do in the show notes, I'll put the Amazon link for it. And the actual title of the book is On Death and Dying. What the Dying Have to Teach Doctors nurses, clergy and their own families. Now Elizabeth Kubler-Ross was interviewed by Oprah Winfrey when she was towards the end of her own life. She suffered a series of strokes and if you want to do a Google search on that, it's fascinating. And she was in the acceptance stage and flitting between the anger and the acceptance stage. And that's another thing I should mention really. With the five stages, the denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance, You don't just stay in one. You can be in a few of them at the same time. Or within a few seconds of each other. And that's all very, very normal. Now, if you've been triggered by the death of Queen Elizabeth, or you're upset about her death anyway, there's a few things you can do. One, I would recommend getting that book. There's something, for me personally anyway, I like getting my hands on a good book. I like diving into the pages, learning something that I didn't know, finding something out about myself that I didn't know. With that book, if you were to get it, you may find something that might assist you. Another one, it can be get a support network around you. You know, it's okay to grieve. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to cry. It's okay to talk about it. I volunteer for a charity in Kent called Holding On Letting Go. And it helps kids from 7 to 17 who have suffered a bereavement in some regard in their life. So it could be a grandparent, a parent, an aunt or uncle. And the death can be by natural causes or not. 
What I've found is, when you give the child a chance to talk about their emotions, all kinds of stuff comes out. And they can be going through the five stages as well. But because it's a safe setting, no one's getting upset with them if they talk about it. It's a wonderful charity to volunteer for. I've been with them about seven, eight years now, I think. And it's incredible. So maybe a support network for yourself. Maybe talk about your feelings with family and friends. Pick your people who you want to talk to. Sometimes if a person has lost a family member, they may find that their support network or what they perceive as their support network disappears. And it's not necessarily because they don't care. It's because they don't know what to say. And it's okay to talk about it, but pick your people. Another option would be to go and see a therapist. So you may not be sad for the death of Queen Elizabeth II. But it might have triggered you about a death that you have experienced within your network that hasn't really been resolved for you. And it's bringing up all these kinds of feelings and emotions and it can be the smallest of things that can trigger you. So it might be an idea that if you are identifying with this, do a Google search, go and find a therapist that you, are, that you resonate with. Have a consultation with them or a phone call, check out the website and see if they would be a good fit for you. So I won't say I hope you've enjoyed this episode, but I do hope you found it helpful. So I really hope this has helped in some way. I also hope it has inspired you in some way too. Feel free to like, share and subscribe to this podcast. Tell your friends about it. They may get some benefit from it as well. I really hope to see you on the next podcast episode. So for the time being, this is James Taylor from Write Your Own Story. And as always, my best wishes. Bye-bye.